Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making this. It's very, very, very beginner. Easy, easy peasy. Let's get started. Chunky yarn, obviously. You can use wool, you can use acrylic, you can use whatever your little heart desires, whatever you want to put on your hands and keep your hands warm. Mine is acrylic, it's not real wool because I want to be able to wash them. But I am going to leave an extra long tail. So my tail is probably from my middle of my elbow to my hand long. And that's where I'm going to make my slip knot. So once you have your slip knot, you're going to chain 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And this chain is going to be this part that we're doing. So it only needs to be 10 or however long you want it on your wrist I guess. So this is the part that we're doing that's why I only chained 10 and mine goes pretty far down my wrist. So it goes halfway up my forearm. There's my crook in my elbow. It goes halfway up my forearm because that's what I want. But if you want it shorter then don't chain 10, chain 7 or chain 6. I mean, it's all up to you, but that's the part we're making is this part right here. So depending on the length, mine goes halfway up my forearm on a chain 10. So that's up to you. And all we're going to do along the first row is we're just going to single crochet, starting in the first chain that you can visually see. We're just going to single crochet all the way across. And nine, the last hole. Chain one. So now we're going to crochet in the back loops only. And I hold my work. I mean, this is normally how somebody would be holding their work. Well, I can't see the back chains at this point. So I hold my work sideways. This is the chain we're going to be working in. Is this here. The back chain. Or loop, sorry. The back loop of this chain. This is the chain. The V's. Those are your chains. Front loop, back loop. Back loop only throughout the project till well, till we're done making this part anyway. Cuz that's how you get this part is by working in the back loops only. But I hold my work sideways. I don't hold my work like most people do, and I can easily see the back chain. So you're going to single crochet into the back loop only. I keep saying back chain. I don't mean that. So back loop only. Make sure you're counting. Three, four, five, six. 
seven, eight. And this is where it gets tricky. So you got one one left. You got to do nine. You want them it, this to go the ninth stitch. You want it to go through both loops. It's gonna be tight, but we want it through both loops for the final stitch. And when you do your next row, it's going to be hard to see. Chain one. That's row two. Row three is the exact same thing. Back loop only. I can't see the stitch. You have to pull this, pull this guy back, and to expose the stitch, and then try to get your thing in. It's going to be tight. Row four. So this is four rows. Depending, on, I had to do 15 rows to get it to go around my fat hand and wrist. This is where you're going to decide how many rows. You're just going to have to keep wrapping it around your arm because that's all I did to know that I did 15 rows. I just had to keep wrapping it around my arm because that's what you're going to do. You're just going to make a flat piece. You're going to wrap it around your arm and you're going to sew. It together so I did 15 rows it's it's up to you you're gonna chain one here all the time if I forget to say it which I will because to me ending a row is an automatic chain and if you're doing a single crochet it's an automatic chain one if I was doing double crochet it'd be a chain two and so on and so forth so that's row four. We're on row five. one turn your work or hold it sideways like I do this is row six sorry if you're counting If you have to count, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this little bobble thing is nine. Because there is a stitch in there. You just always gotta roll this guy back. Row seven. Row eight. Sorry, I keep going off camera. cleaning on my own yarn. I do suggest making the two mitts at the same time because different things can change your tension. So your gauges are going to be different, which means one's going to be bigger or smaller than the other. You might get lucky and they're the same size. I am, uh, I have a huge problem with tension. If I'm sick or I'm stressed or my tension's tight, it is so tight. Um, I struggle with tension. That's my number one problem. So when I'm doing soles for slippers or I'm doing mitts, um, I'm, I do them on the same day because my tension will be different. One, three, two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. So we're on eleven. I'm doing fifteen for mine. At this point I'm not really showing you which loop to go into because you should know by now. So that's why I'm just just plugging along here. This is number 12. Just make sure you're still doing 9 across.
But I hope I'm going slow enough. Um, this is about the pace I I do it at anyway. I'm not going really slow for the video purposely. This is the pace I crochet at because to me it's very relaxing. Um, I don't go 90 miles an hour. I just don't. I never have. This should be 13, I think. <laughs> You'll get used to finding that at the end. Um, it's just a squeeze and pull down and the, the stitch pops out. It's 14. And I have a feeling I told you the wrong number because I don't think this is wrapping around my wrist. Hi guys, sorry about that, my camera died, but I did get a chance to count my rows and I thought I'd, I'd done 15, but I had done 20, so I'm going to do 20 rows instead of, right now we're at 14, I think, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, so this row would actually be the 15th row. But I would stop and check just to make sure wrap it around your hand and make sure that you know how many how many more you think you need or or maybe that's enough I have very fat wrists and very fat hands so it could be enough for you Fifteen. So just go ahead and wrap it around. See, I've got a ways to go. So I'm going to do four more. Nice and quiet today. I don't have the radio playing because I didn't want to be copywritten because, you know, I don't want to talk a lot during your work. I know how distracting it can be.
could throw my ball on the throw my ball on the floor so it unravels itself. I feel like I've done something wrong. Yeah, but this does not look right to me. I've missed a stitch somewhere. And it happens. You just gotta pull your work out and do it again. Try to make both pairs. I, I don't know if I've said this already, but try to make both pairs um, at the same time. That way your tension is basically the same. Oh, there's the stitch I'm missing. I didn't pull back that little ball hard enough. Yeah, see my tension was pretty tight there, so I'm going to struggle to get that in there. Oh, there we go. That's why I missed it. That looks better. All right, what am I on? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and then seventeen. So this will be eighteen. And I'm still going to check after I'm done twenty to see if it does wrap around me pretty good. I don't want it tight. I want to be able to slip my hand in and out fairly easily. I hear my neighbor out there. I don't know if my camera's picking it up. Chipping ice. Very icy out there today. I live in Canada. I'm a little closer today. I'm desperately trying to stay in the camera frame. I know a few times yesterday before my camera died, I uh, I kind of wandered. It's hard. It's not easy to do this. My tension's still a little tight. It's not easy to do this when you got a camera strapped between your legs. Turn on the neck, turn on the back. You can see how tighter my work is from yesterday's. You can see the difference. I'm just going to try to stretch that out and try to go a little lighter. I'm on my last row anyway. And then we're going to turn our work. And then we're going to learn how to do a half double crochet. Which, i got to say, by far is my favorite stitch. Yeah, see that wraps around nice and comfortable now. You know, my, I'm not going to struggle getting my hand in and out. So at this point, we're not we're not cutting off any strings. We're not doing anything weird like that. We're not even turning our work. So at this point, we're right here. So the next stitch we're going to do is this half double crochet. And then I did a double crochet, and then I did a half double crochet, then I did double crochet. So we're going to do the the smaller one here is the half double crochet. 
So we're going to do half double, double, half double. And then while we're making our double, as the perfect opportunity, but with a bigger stitch to put the hole for your thumb in there. So that's what we're going to do. So starting in the first hole, there, there's no chains. For the beginners, we're just going to find every hole we can and stick a half double crochet into it. Um, but there's no there's no chains to go into so you're just going into whatever holes you can find there's one there's one there's one and all your half double crochets are going to go into this so this very first hole I'm going to go into with a half double crochet so this is what you're looking at here so instead of chaining one I'm just going to go right into the very first stitch. Hold on. Okay. Hi, I'm back. Doorbell. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going half double crochet into this very first stitch. We're not chaining over anything. We're just going half double crochet into this very first stitch. So a half double crochet is a yarn over. Hold your probably try to slip off. Go into the very first hole, grab your yarn again, come back around, you have three loops. You're just going to take your yarn and you're just going to go through all of those loops. And that is a half double crochet. And you're going to do that every hole you can ram your needle into. Or your hook, your needle. yarn over and through any hole you can find come back through make sure your hook is down uh, chunky yarn I tend to grab extra pieces let's just pull that off there we go so it is a smaller stitch and it will kind of bring everything together and tighten everything up. Sorry, I'm going off camera again. Oh, I just did two in that one. Yarn over. Find your next hole. Yarn over, find your next hole. Enough to give it a little wiggle. Yarn over, next hole. Oh, sorry. Sometimes it's very hard to. It's tight, but I wanted to you know, kind of bring this all together so it wasn't so loosey-goosey because this is where my hand's going up to. That's why I chose that stitch. Next hole's right there. They're fairly close because we only did a single crochet. So they're fairly close. Sorry. Going out of frame again. Try to keep my hands down. I'm trying to get as close to the camera as possible so you can see really what I'm doing. And I'm going out of frame while I'm doing it. So I'll just use my editing software to zoom in if I feel it necessary. Feel free. Pull your work apart to find these holes.
one more hole. This is your slip stitch hole from before. That's why there's such a big get gap, but you can pull that shut. We're gonna be sewing with that later, so but you can just pull that shut like that. So now we're gonna chain one and two. And we're going to turn our work. So you can see all your chains now from the half double crochet. We're going to go double crochet into each of them. Skipping this one, we're going to go right into this one. Do a double crochet. So yarn over. Go through your chain, grab some yarn, come back up, grab some yarn, go through the first two, and then go through the other two. And that's a double crochet. Next chain, yarn over. You're going right through the entire chain. So you want two pieces of yarn. Grab some yarn. Three hoops, three loops, come through the first two, and then come through the last two. And we'll do that all the way across. I'm going a little slower. Like I said, I'm not a fast crocheter anyway. Yarn over, into the stitch, grab some yarn, I'll try to do this up close again, yarn over, you're going right into that hole, right there, and you can see, sorry, shadowing. You can see your stitch right there, right there. That's where you're going. You'll get used to what you're looking at. So yarn over, go into your stitch, make sure you've got two pieces of yarn. You know you're through the whole entire stitch. Grab some yarn and pull through. Three loops, grab some yarn, go through the first two. Grab some more yarn and go through the last two. That's your double crochet. Oh, I guess I should have counted how many half double crochets I have. I'll count, I'll count these so you know how many you're looking at across. I mean, oops, sorry, I bumped you. It all depends. I did 20. So I did 20 rows of this because I'm a chunky monkey, but if you're not, um, you probably did, you know, 15, 16, 17, whatever you've done. Um, 15 I usually do for children's sizes, like my grandkids, I did 15. Um, but it all depends. It all depends on you and your hand. Everyone's hands are different. 
So your your numbers are going to be different, but if you're a chunky monkey like me and you had to do 20, then at least you can go by my numbers and know whether you've got the stitches that you need to have. And hopefully there's no more interruptions. Not that it's an interruption for you. It's a cut in the camera, but just know I didn't do any work while you well while you were gone. While I was gone answering the door, um, I tur just turned the video off. Yeah, that's why you're gonna see a little bloop. And don't forget, you still got this last stitch that likes to hide itself in here. You still got to squeeze that with your fingers and try to bring out the stitch. You always got a little hidey stitch. So I've got, counting this as a stitch, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 stitches across and that's because we missed one here so I did 20 rows I would have had 20 half double crochets and because I skipped this one here because I'm trying to bring it in a little bit for my for my hand um, I skipped a stitch here that's why I have 19 so now that you've got to the end it's the same deal as before you're gonna chain we're going to only chain one because we're only doing a half double and as you can see it's a much shorter um, stitch than a double. A double is much bigger, a half double is much shorter so when I do the half double um, I still only chain one. Um, a lot of, that's a person preference. For a double I will chain two and then for a triple Obviously, I'm going to chain three. So we're just chaining one here, and we're going to turn our work. Now, we're not doing any more back loop nonsense. We're just going straight into, you can see all of the holes along here. We're just going to, this is the easy part. We're just going straight into um, the holes. And again, with the half double, I'm going to go right into the very, very first hole. So I'm going to chain over, or yarn over, pull up, so I have three loops, yarn over again, I'm going to come through all those three loops. get a wiggle. Chunky is can be difficult to work it's chunky is great to work with but can also be difficult sometimes. And make sure you're counting. That's why I'm not saying too much. Make sure you're counting. You, you need to have 19. Well, this one you're going to have probably 20. We'll see at the end. I actually never counted them in my other project. I'd seen lots of projects done for wrist warmers, is what they call them. Um, and this was my favorite. Even though you have to sew it together, this was my absolute um, favorite one. And it's the one that I made up. So um, there's probably not another one like it. <laughs> um, I just decided one night I was going to sit down and see what I could come up with. And, and I really, really liked what I came up with. So fortunately, I didn't write anything down. I had to remember it all. And I think I'm not doing too bad. I still haven't written it down, but I'll at least have this video. So 
So if it, you know, I just made this up, and I'm not an avid crocheter, but if you um, if you see any problems with it, you know, write it in the comments. I don't mind. I can handle constructive criticism. Uh, not rudeness, just constructive criticism. I tend to get angry with the the rude comments, but. Uh, just don't see any need for it. If you want to constructively criticize me, then, you know, or tell me if I've done something wrong. So I've got one more hole. Half double crochet to the final hole. And I have... No, I still have 19. I didn't know what I would come up with, but yeah, I still got 19. So here we're going to chain two. And if it looks like it comes in here, it is. The half double crochet is a much tighter stitch, and it should be coming in a, a little, you know, to snug your hand up. That's why I chose to do the half double, then the double, then the half double. So, so far we've done the half double, the double, half double. This one is going to be a double. So we're going to do the whole. So chain two, turn your work. You're going to do a double crochet into the first hole. Into the second hole. Into the third hole. And it looks like I skipped two stitches. So you're going to chain two because I'm going to skip two stitches. If I was going to skip three stitches, I would chain three. So I'm going to skip these two, that one and that one. And I'm going to go directly into that one, yarn over, and go right into that one. pull through two and pull through two and that's your thumb hole and yes it's it's big um, you know I don't want to be uncomfortable when I'm wearing something I don't like tight things but it's up to you and you probably have a much smaller thumb than I do you can see my big fat digit sticking out there so if you have a smaller thumb by all means if you need to just skip one chain to make a thumb hole just chain one and then skip that chain. If you need to make two, chain two and skip two chains. Chain three and skip three chains. So that's how that works for making your thumb hole. And then you just carry on. Keep going with your double crochets like it's nobody's business. Like you got the world by the bleep.
and a final stitch over here if I can get my fingers into it. There you go, you got your thumb hole. Chain one. Turn your work. Pull your yarn out. Gonna drink water. As far as my cat's not in here playing with my yarn. Alright, so now we're going to do another row of a half double crochet. And I'm not going to try to... That's a big hole. Well, I'm not going to try to get into the chains with half double crochet just because it is tighter than the row we just did. So I'm just going to go right into the hole. So stick with me. You'll see. First hole. Half double crochet. And here we're just pulling through all the loops. All the loops. Sorry, I'm going off camera again. I'll get used to not doing that eventually. I don't really want to crochet looking through the viewfinder, so... That's not easy either. So I do tend to look around at my work. And I do feel like I need it closer to the camera, but... You know, my editing software has crop, zoom, and everything else, so I don't know why I keep doing that. Bear with me. Not as professional as some of the other ones, but I will tell you things and show you things that the other ones don't. And I'm not so fast and speedy. You know, I, uh, I don't crochet that way. I like it be relaxed and stuff like this. So now we're at the hole. And normally you would you would go into actually I got one more chain here. Hold on. I got a chain here. I gotta go into I almost missed. So now I'm gonna do two half doubles right into the hole instead of trying to find the chain. It's way easier. The hole's big enough that, you know, you're not really going to lose anything. Why do I feel like I just did a double crochet right there? Did I? I don't know. I feel like I did. Sometimes habits can be maddening. Single crochets, I always want to yarn over first. So I want to do a double. And then you just carry on into the next stitch on the other side of the hole. did our thumb hole and then we just did the half double crochet up here we've got one more double crochet and then I just completed it with a single crochet around the top so we're just about done here you're going to chain two and turn your work I 
double crochet See, now I've gone through and I only picked up one loop. So just to correct that problem, you got it to pick up two. And you'll feel it because I just felt it. I have no idea what my neighbor is chipping, but he is a hard-working man. I mean, I know he's chipping ice, but I move my work a lot. I know I do, but you need to be comfortable when you're doing your work. That will also help with your attention. You know, I once watched a video where this woman said, that it's impossible to make two different size booties or two different size it's impossible if you follow the pattern it's impossible and she she was fairly quick I mean you could tell she's been crocheting for a very long time and I thought you are an arrogant woman because there's there it's it's not impossible stress lack of sleep. There is a number of factors that will make you have tension on your on your work. That's why I always say if you're going to do, you know, a pair of something, do it in the same day because your tension's either going to be tight all the way through both projects or it's going to be loose all the way through both projects. For me, you plainly seen um that even from where I had started with you yesterday before my battery died and where I picked up today there was a difference you could see the tension was different and that's because I didn't have very much sleep I pulled a muscle in my neck I suffer from fibro hence all the all the breakouts and the rashes I get on my body and so my tension today is a lot tighter than it was yesterday because yesterday I had you know gotten at least six hours of sleep and oh what did I just do oh no I'm doing doubles right see I shouldn't be talking I'm probably interrupting you too anyway my point is if that happens to you it's common if you've watched the same video as me where this arrogant woman was saying it's impossible to get two different size booties or two different... She was talking about booties at the time. It's not impossible. It is highly possible. So I actually unsubscribed from her just based on that comment alone because I don't want to watch somebody that's that arrogant and think that you're not human and you don't make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. You're a human being. I mean, that's what life's all about, right? It's making mistakes learning from him. If life was as easy as crocheting where you could just rip it out and start over, <laughs> it would be a lot easier. But not supposed to be easy. That one was a little tight. There we go. Chain one. I almost like crochet. Sorry, my camera shut off because that's what it does. It records for a certain amount of time. And then it shuts off, so I just restarted it, but I didn't do anything. We pretty sure it caught the chain one. All I was doing was the chain one. I'm pretty sure the camera shut off shortly after I did that. So now we have a completed project almost. Um, so you can see the doubles, but then after the double, I just did a single crochet along the top just to kind of keep it clean looking not that it's not clean looking it looks perfectly fine right there I mean I could I could just close it and, and be done with that but 
I wanted to do a single crochet all along the top. So I'll start in the very first single crochet all along the top gives your work. I mean, you could, once we learn how to do scalloped edges, or if you already know how to do scalloped edge, you could do. Oh, I just see. It's a habit. It's a habit to yarn over. I don't use the single crochet much. I was going to start a whole new channel for this, but I don't know how much I'm going to be doing. Plus, when you start a new channel, you can only upload 15-minute um, videos. And I've had this channel for almost three years. So I can upload like an hour's video. So that saves me, you know, having to fast forward I hate that. I hate watching a video and all of a sudden they're they're fast forwarding and you have to like take your hands off your work and hit pause really fast so you don't miss anything because all of a sudden they're just done or they've cut the camera and all of a sudden they're just done. I hate that. I hate that. Okay, so after you've finished your final little cleanup row, you're just going to chain one and hold on, I have to get scissors. Okay, here you're going to need scissors and a needle, a darning needle for sewing. Alright. I want you to leave quite a bit of a tail. For sewing. Pull that through. Pull that tight. Whoa. Got these little fuzzies. Looks like it's about the same size. Yeah, I might not have done too badly. So anyway, it doesn't matter where your seam is. You you're you're not going to be able to see it. Um. You can see where I've hidden my yarn slightly. And you can see where I've sewn it, but really, if you're looking from far away, you can't even tell where the seam is going to be. And that is because you're going to sew this in such a way. First of all, let's hide this guy. Let's hide this one. The reason I wanted the long tail is because I just really wanted to hide it well. You know, if you're going to be washing these, I didn't want anything to come undone in the washing process. That's why I told you to leave such a long tail because we're actually going to weave it in all along this whole part here. And that way through all the washing that you do, um, it shouldn't come undone. Why well, take chances? You're not going to feel this at all.
This might seem excessive, <laughs> but like I said, you're going to be washing these. So I literally went all the way across to the other end. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to stretch out what I just did. And then I'm going to cut it off as close as I can to the very bottom. There. Stretch it out. And you can hardly even see that. Actually, you shouldn't be able to see it at all. I can because I know where I just put it. that aside. So anyway, back to sewing this part. Thread your needle. I'm doing it off camera because this is so long. Put your two ends together. Now to start, you know how you used to have to pull back this end you have to pull that back a little bit. You want to go into the back loop, through the back loop, into the other back loop. So back loop to back loop. I think this is called a whip stitch. So back loop to back loop. Plus, you know you're sewing it straight as well. Back loop to back loop. And that is how you do an invisible stitch. And when we turn this around, you are not going to see any of this. squeeze it together you should just be getting back loop back loop back loop oh I can't get my needle into that one for some reason there we go that one was a little tight Adjust my loop to loop ratio. Back loop to back loop. It's a nice stitch and makes your projects way easier when you can just sew them together as opposed to, you know, other means of of doing this. I've made these gloves many times. Like I said, I made them for my grandkids, I made them for my daughter. But this one to me, and it's not because I just made it up, and it's not because it's my design, I prefer, even though I have to sew it together, I prefer this one. And make sure you get the ones on the ends as well. And if you have to do one at a time. Tie a little bit of a knot in there. So even though you just sewed along there, we're still going to hide our cord because again, if you're washing 
anything. Actually, I'll just go straight down through here. You know, you're, you're going to be washing this. And you don't want things popping out. Coming undone. It goes straight down that one. Stretch it out. Cut it off. Turn it right side up. Cut this little piece sticking out. That and that. Oh, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next video.